concern that we've fallen a little behind in this class. So what I am going to do is this. I am going to uh, finish up the example that we started last time, uh, which is a flag example. And after that, um, we will, I imagine that will take the rest of today, today's lecture. And then after that, uh, Wednesday will be sort of a catch-up day. All right, so it will be an all-lab day. I do strongly encourage you to, to show up anyhow because, again, um, if there's, there's some reason that, that um, there's some issue that you're having, that, that you know, you're, you're not completing the assignments, you know, uh, that will be a good chance for us to spend some significant time working together and getting them resolved. All right. Um, the flag game that we went over uh, last time, that we started to go over last time, let's take a look at it. If you remember, I had a little bit of a problem with the device. Or maybe the problem was with me, and I just didn't know what button to push. <laughs> but I couldn't bring up the menu. Uh, I brought up this this one. Um, the, the other tablets work different than, than mine. And th this phone works more like my phone, so um, it's a little easier for me to navigate. Uh, but to, to run the flag game, and test yourself on your knowledge of well, identifying flags. Which I do not understand. It's going to be a compiler now when I was running it in my office. I did switch the target uh, Android, so maybe that has something to do with it. Let me make a quick change here. not like the match parent in the um, XML file, so I'm changing that to wrap content. The errors mysteriously go away, or not so mysteriously, and we get running on our little device here, the flag game. And to, to revisit this, we have uh, a display of a flag. We are asked to identify the flag, which um, in some cases isn't particularly easy. If we make a wrong choice, a little animation runs. If we make the correct choice, it tells us. Now, we have some options on this. This is what I was not able to show. By picking the menu button here, what menu button? We have two options. One of the options says select number of choices. The other says select regions. So for example, if we want to be quizzed simply on, on European flags, we could go and we could turn everything else off and just get tested on European flags. All right. We could also 
change the number of choices that we have. By default, there's three choices. We could expand and say instead we want nine choices. Now, the interesting thing is, if you notice, with nine choices, that little bottom part's cut off. If we have time, maybe we'll look at that. We didn't have that issue last time. Well, we didn't have that issue last time because we couldn't set the uh, to nine options. But even if we could, we wouldn't have had that issue because we had a bigger screen. So if we have time, maybe we'll look at that, uh, of, of how to do that. All right, at any rate, let's pick up where we left off last time. And last time we were reviewing the animations and how those were accomplished. The animations are accomplished via a new sort of XML file. Now, do keep in mind there's a, there's a few different ways that you can achieve animation in Android. And this is one of them. In a nutshell, you specify a sequence of little events or transformations, however you want to call it, um, with the device or, or with, 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 uh, with, with a, a view. Um, you can, for example, move the X position, which is horizontal. You can move the Y position, which is vertical. You can rotate it. You can change the opacity of it to, to make it fade in or fade out. You can change the size of it. All right? And you can specify this sequence all right, uh, of things to be done. And once you've specified that sequence, you can apply that to any number of different views. If you recall last time, maybe it's still set this way. If you get the wrong one, we could apply the same animation to the view and to the button. And I think we're actually doing that now. All right, let's refresh our memory on that. There's an incorrect shake XML. And if we look at that, this contains the, the list of, of transformations or, or actions that we want to have done. And it includes the first one moves the X position, so it moves it horizontally, as does the second and the third. The last one accomplishes a rotation by specifying the degrees that we want to rotate and so on. We can set for any of these the duration, in other words, how long, that's going to, how long it should take to, to do that, along with the offset. So, for example, the first part of the shake starts with no offset, so it starts as soon as the animation fires off and goes for 100 milliseconds. The second part of it also goes for 100 milliseconds, but with an offset of 100 milliseconds. So it waits 100 milliseconds and then does this. The effect being that it does the first one immediately after it does the second one. We apply that to our control in this manner. First thing we do is we define an animation object. We then load the animation object from that XML file. This is almost like inflating our layout, right? You see this in, in a number of cases within Android where you have an XML file that describes the structure of something, and then we kind of bring it to life. And we do that with our layout, kind of like up here. But we also do that with the animation. We load the animation from the XML file. We then set the repeat for three. So it will repeat the animation three times. Once we've done that then, we can then go and apply this animation wherever we want to. Oops. For example, here in the case of a incorrect answer, there we go. We apply the animation to the flag. And we also apply the animation to the, um, to the button. 
One good thing to practice as you're doing this would be to go and, and try to change that animation. You can make that animation do a bunch of different things. You could make it get, you know, the flag get bigger, smaller, fade out, whatever. So that would be a good thing uh, to play around with. The next thing I want to focus on is I want to focus on the menus and how they uh, pop up. All right? Because I'm not sure if we've seen an example of a menu before. If we have, then it certainly bears repeating. All right. The menu, or I'm saying menu more more precisely, it's the list of options, happens when we press this key. All right. And that's an automatic event in Android. You know, pressing that key, your application, if it has options, then you can write code to handle that action. And I don't think in the previous examples we had any cases of that, but we, we do in this case. So, we have an onCreate options menu that gets fired off when the user asks for the options. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a menu for those options that consists of the two things. And the two things are the choices menu and the regions menu. We associate with the menu items a value of first and a value of first plus one. Think of those as being like the index into an array. So when we create the menu item, we create it with that ID. So effectively, choices menu is, a, is an ID of zero, and regions menu is an ID of one. It's just a relative position in it. And we pull the string from the string file. Now, another built-in method, and that's one thing that I think is important to see. It, it, might, be, it might do you a benefit to look through uh, any of these applications, really, including this one, and identify which of the functions are functions that are just defined as part of the framework, and what are functions that we have created. This one, of on options item selected, again, is something that's built into the framework. If we're implementing options, all right, when we select the menu option, this event will fire. So, this is built into the framework as well. When we pick, when we click the option button, this event will fire and will create this menu. Well, this is the code that will execute if they've actually selected an option from that menu. And what we're doing here is, again, notice that these built-in functions get passed an argument. This one gets passed the menu item that was selected. All right. And each menu item has an ID associated with it. Well, what is that ID? We define that ID up here when we created the menu item. The um, number of choices one got, a, got an ID of zero. The regions menu ID got an ID of one. We have a case statement then to look at to see which menu selection we picked. All right. So in other words, this invokes this method on create options menu, creates that menu. When either of those two buttons are clicked, this code kicks in. And the first thing that we do is we look at the ID of the item that got clicked and we determine, did they ask to change the number of choices or did they ask to select the region?
if they ask to change the number of choices, what we're going to do is we're going to pop up that little selection that allows them to select either three, six, or nine choices. So we pull from our strings file an array of the number of guesses that you're allowed to choose. And let's look at that here. Number of choices, the, 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 the list of guesses that they're allowed to choose are three, six, or nine. So we pull that array We're going to create an alert. What's an alert? Alert is sometimes called a modal window. And that's just a fancy word of saying that you have to answer it before you can go on to the next step. All right? You see this a lot in programming. You know, sometimes you have a couple windows open and you can switch between the two windows. All right? Think of opening up tabs on a, uh, you know, uh, in Eclipse. You know, we can go back and forth between the tabs. We can go back and forth between the windows. Or think of opening multiple documents in Word. We can go back and forth between windows. However, if an alert pops up in the middle of the screen, you have to answer that before you go on. Typically, it's something important, and you can't proceed unless, uh, until you give the answer. Uh, again, that, that's an alert, or sometimes called a modal window. So here we're, we're building an alert. We set the title of it, again, getting it from the strings file. And then we create the items from that array. So from that array of guess, guesses list, we create that. And we create a listener. Why did we not have to create a listener here? Well, effectively, the framework already handles the processing of, of code when an when a option is selected. We don't have to define a listener of our own. This event automatically fires off when we press one of the selections from our menu. But now, we're popping open this menu. And we have to define what we're going to do when we click each of these. So when we click 6, what do we do? When we click 9, what do we do? When we click 3, what do we do? Well, what we do is we go and we figure out how many rows of these things we want. By taking our answer, dividing it by three, so if we want three options, that's one row's worth of options. If we ask for six options, that's two rows. Nine is three rows. And we call the reset quiz method. The reset quiz method then goes in and... clears everything out and goes and creates the quiz based on the number of choices that we have defined. We'll save that function for, for a bit. Just trust that we've set the number of options that we want. And we'll go and we will, when we create the quiz, and we, when we create each quiz question, we will go and we'll set We'll set the um, we've we 
we've set the, the attribute the instance variable for the number of rows, and when we when we call reset quiz, that number of rows will come into play when we go and when we redraw each question. Now the other option is if they've chosen the uh, the regions, and with the regions we choose and we do a very similar thing. We grab a list of regions and we create for each region a checkbox and then we do sort of the same thing. The difference between the two alerts is the one alert simply allows you to make one answer. In other words, the number of uh, choices that you have, you can only pick either three, six, or nine. You can't pick three and nine. Whereas the regions is defined as a multiple choice a multi-choice listener, which means that you can select any number of options and then click OK. Again, it puts into this instance variable, the region map, a set of booleans that define which regions are selected and which regions are not. And then it calls the reset quiz. So in essence, how does the options work? The options work has the options have code in them to pop up that menu. Based on which option we pick, it then gives a second set of options. Based on what option we pick there, it sets an instance variable. In one case, it sets an instance variable for the number of rows. In another case, it sets an instance variable that contains an array with the number of, uh, with the regions that we want to see or, or don't see. In either case, it calls reset quiz. And what reset quiz does is it fires off a routine to go in and sort of initialize things, get the ball rolling. Reset quiz will also be the method that will get called when we first start things up. All right, because when we first start things up, we need to set the ground and create the quiz and so on. Questions at this point? Let's look at reset quiz. Or actually, let's go back to the on create. All right. On create, we're pretty much doing what we've done in the, uh, in the normal applications. That is, we've set some of our instance variables. We default the regions to all the regions selected. We set some pointers to our object so that we can write code for them. And then we call reset quiz again. So both the first time through and any time we change the options, we call reset quiz. Let's take a look at what this does. First thing we do is we pull um, a list of, we're going to pull a list of files from our assets associated with this application. We then look Here's where we're looping through the regions map to determine if this is a region that's enabled. Because remember, initially all the regions are enabled, but through our options we can choose which regions we want enabled and which regions we don't want enabled. Here we're looping through the list of regions and we're pulling the name of the file from the appropriate asset list. 
Let's look, we, I don't think we've looked at how the images appear. The images are part of the assets. And for each region that we can select, there's a separate folder. So effectively, if we've selected a region, and we've said that that region is going to be on the quiz, we are going to look through this folder and pull all the images from that folder Let me rephrase that. We're going to pull the names of all the images in that folder and add it to the list of file names. Effectively, what we're doing in that file names, file name list array is we're coming up a list of the flag images which are fair game. All right. So if we pick a region, we go and we look through that folder, through that assets folder, for all the images that are in there, and we go and we add that to the file list. We get rid of the .png because when we are going to be displaying the name of the country, where we don't want to display Egypt.png, we just want to display Egypt. So we get rid of the .png. So at this point, this region map, or I'm sorry, this, this file names list contains a list of all the images that are fair questions. All right? is based on whether we've selected a region or not. So based on which regions we've selected and not selected, that file names list will contain a list of all the flags, all the file names for the flags of that region. We initialize a couple variables, correct answers to zero. We do this until, or we do this as long as, the flag counter is less than or equal to 10. This is something that's kind of goofy in this quiz. This quiz doesn't ask you 10 questions. This, this quiz asks you, um, go, goes until you get 10 flags correct. All right? So I guess it does ask you 10 questions. All right? It just asks you the same question over and over again until you get it correct. All right? We randomize which flag is going to be next using the random index, pulling the random function. We look to see if and get the file name from that random uh, index. We look to see if that country has already been selected or not. Because we don't want to show the same flag twice in the same quiz. If it has not already been selected, then we're going to go and we're going to add that to the quiz. And then we load next flag. So let's make sure we follow what we have at this point. Let's kind of highlight the main purposes of these uh, sections of code. And again, um, you need to go and look at this to see and make sure you understand how the specific instructions that are employed here relate to, to the impact, uh, relate to, to what's being done here. And in this case, again, we are 